What's good? It's Jordan. Today I'll be talking to you about results of overconsumption of knowledge. Many times we try to use our knowledge in order for us to display how intelligent we are, how confident we are, how strong we are in knowledge. And we try to display these characteristics on others to impose laws, strengths, confidence, but what we must understand is once we reach in the arena of overconsumption of knowledge, it can destroy us. Understand overconsumption of knowledge can destroy us due to the fact of the matter of us being prideful, thinking that we know everything, thinking that we don't need to learn, thinking that we've learned everything and there's nothing more for us to learn in this day and age, in this society, thinking that we have it all figured out and that can be our destruction. Understand that even if you're a knowledgeable individual and you have the highest form of knowledge, the highest form of education, the highest form of degree, what you must understand is you still can learn various different things. There's people who are amazingly book smart. They know how to get into a career path through education that fuels them numerous amounts of monetary gains. And then there's other individuals who are more street smart and more street elevated where they can navigate different societies, different directions through the streets, understand what's going on outside in the atmosphere. They're aware of their surroundings. But what we must understand is whether you're street smart or book smart you can be both there's always ways for you to learn both there's always ways for you to know your surroundings know the environment that you're in and navigate through that environment the proper way and also be smart with education knowing what's going on in the business world the business sector it isn't just one thing or another, but you have to develop these skills and understand that it's just more than what meets the eye. Most of society just thinks that you have to get an education in order for you to be successful in society. Then there's the others who think out of the box and start their own business from the ground up and have their own business. So what we're being taught in this day and age that we think is knowledgeable isn't really knowledgeable. There's different ways for you to be quote unquote successful in society. But we have to have a plan, put that plan before the Lord and understand that if the Lord wants this plan to work in our lives, he will make this work. But if he doesn't want this in our lives, no matter what we try to do, we will not get through in what we want to do. Understand that God has major plans for you and I, and what we decide that we want to do in our own lives will not help. It will actually hinder. God has a mission for each and every one of us. But if we think that our knowledge can get us so far to end up in positions in society that are higher positions. You can be in those higher positions, but still feel lost, still feel alone. Be not confident in that position that you're in. Understand that the most high guides and the most high will lay the foundation for you instead of you trying to lay the foundation. But what you have to do is put everything before God, put every single thing before God. Understand that when God provides us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, it's not for us to go out there and disrespect others and be prideful and be boastful about what God provides because what God can provide, he can take away. So understand that once you receive a blessing from the Lord, that use that blessing to help others. Don't use that blessing to hinder others and judge others and try to destroy others because you found grace in the Lord but use that knowledge to help elevate others, strengthen others, 
guide others and plant seeds. Many times as well, when we're knowledgeable and we gain a sense of knowledge, we want to have debates with other people about things that people have their own opinions on. Many times people want to debate about if there's God or not. What you must do as a follower of God, walking by faith and walking in truth, is you provide knowledge of the Lord to those individuals who believe that God isn't real. But don't try to debate. Don't try to make them feel as though they're lost, they're wrong, they're in a the wrong place. They don't understand what they're saying because understand that you were once in that place of feeling lost and feeling alone and not understanding is God real or not. But what we must do is encourage them, help them and provide them the truth with the word of the Lord, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. And in everything that we do, we must provide research through the scripture of the Lord to these individuals who don't believe in the Lord planting seeds but what we must not do is judge them but guide them see one of the main problems in society is we tend to judge before guiding if someone makes a mistake we laugh at them we judge them we call them names that God doesn't want us to call them how are people supposed to learn if we're chastising them? How are people supposed to grow and elevate if we're chastising them? We have to be good teachers, great leaders in order for people to follow. A great leader doesn't chastise somebody that doesn't know something. You know what a great leader does? They correct, they provide information, they provide knowledge with backing behind it. And this is how we help people move more towards the faith and lean towards the true and living God. That is what God wants us to do. But we have to check ourselves first. We have to check our hearts first. And we have to look into ourselves deeper and understand, are we really a leader or not? Because there's many people who feel like they're leaders, but they're actually not supposed to be in a leadership position. It's just because people boast them and they tell them in this worldly society that they're meant to be leaders but in actuality they're really not meant to be leaders they're followers behind the scenes they follow other people and they cannot lead and conduct their own lives so understand what role you play are you a leader or are you a follower are you somebody that leads the way are you somebody that tends to be on their own and conducts people in a direction of leadership or are you somebody that follows the crowd follows people doesn't know when to move alone, when to walk alone, when to trust in the Lord, when to follow the Lord. The choice is yours. You have the ability to decipher what type of individual you are and how you decide to navigate this society. But look within yourself first and understand that we can have all the worldly knowledge that we try to perceive others that we have, but in reality, we don't know anything. We just know a small scale of things in this world, but we do not know the larger picture. God knows the larger picture. It's gone so bad in this society today that people decide to make their own quotes and use their own quotes in this world to try to sound knowledgeable and make it sound that they're of God when it's far from God. If any quotes that we should be using is scriptures from the word, not worldly quotes, that's where the confusion comes in. We try to make our own worldly analogies. And then when we get confused with these worldly analogies, with the scripture, we get lost. Put the scripture first. The scripture is what comes before this worldly quotes and ideologies. It isn't going to help if we decide to place these worldly analogies over the scripture of the Lord. So today I'll be reading the scripture and what we must do in order 
to understand and navigate the society that we're in through the knowledge that God provides and how God taketh away knowledge when we don't decide to conduct ourselves according to what God wants us to do. Ecclesiastes 1.18 For in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. Understand that once we gain more knowledge and wisdom and understanding from the Holy Spirit, from the Lord, that we start to realize that many things that we saw in this world bring sorrow. We think this world is a happy place. We think this world is full of opportunity and full of greatness. Thinking that this world is filled with much happiness and joy and peace, that's an illusion. The world we live in right now is very much wicked and it was wicked in the past. But with social media and all upgraded technology, you see more of the wickedness going on and moving further and further. First Timothy 6, 20 to 21. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Avoid profane and vain babblings and opposition of science, falsely so-called, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. In this statement here, we have many arguments about knowledge. We have many arguments about beliefs, but the Lord says no babbling, no arguments about knowledge because you're wasting your time, you're wasting someone else's time, and nobody is going to really learn anything from these babblings and these arguments and these disagreements. James 1, 9 to 10. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass, he shall pass away. What we must understand is the boastful, the prideful, the arrogant, they will pass away. God doesn't call that in our lives for us to be like that. God calls us to walk in grace to walk in faith and God calls us to walk in blessings that he provides to us and be humble with those blessings that he provides to us. God doesn't want us to walk in a direction that is displeasing of him when he provides us blessings. So we must take a note of these things that the more knowledge we gain, the more humble that we have to be because with that knowledge, he is providing us a way to help others understand him, understand his mission and what he calls others to do with the knowledge that he provides us and the direction that he provides us. Obadiah 1, 3, the pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in the heart who shall bring me down to the ground. Understand that the pride of your heart deceives you. And what we must do is take the time out of our day to just reflect on our lives, reflect on ourselves, for reflect on who we are as people. Reflect on, does God approve of us? Does God not approve of us? What can we work on? How can we work on ourselves to be more closer to God? Because each and every one of us still have the ability to work on ourselves, to move in the right direction and be closer to God. But we have to ask God for strength. We have to ask God to help us identify what we need to work on, to clear our hearts, to clear our spirit. And understand that we still have the ability in this life to serve the Lord with all our hearts because the Lord is guiding, watching and strengthening us day after day after day. Understand, in this life, the Most High sees and knows, and He, even in this day and age, is our daily guide. Peace.